All right, hi everyone. We're looking at the next part of our trigonometry section. Uh, last time we looked at how you can use sine, cosine, and tangent to find a, a missing side in your right triangle. So today we're going to see how you can use the same sine, cosine, and tangent in reverse. Maybe they give you two sides, but you need to know the angles that were created inside this triangle. What are those two acute angles? So we're going to do what's called the inverse trig functions to find those missing angles. Oops, that does not look like an S. Now inverse are going to have that little negative one up at the top. It's going to look very similar, very much like an exponent, but it is not the same as an exponent, but we call this an inverse. Just like when we were writing out our sentences with conditional statements, inverse for that meant you took the opposite of. So same thing here, we're going now in the opposite direction. So we're going to be looking for sine inverse, trig inverse, I'm sorry, sine inverse, cosine inverse, and tangent inverse. So let's take a look and see how that's going to change uh, for <clears throat> trying to find our angles. Now this time, it, the labeling is still going to be very much the same, but instead of giving you an acute angle to find, they are giving uh, you the missing angle. So the angle that we are needing to find here, that's the one that we are going to base this off of. So we'll label it. Find that 90 degree angle first so you know where your hypotenuse is because across from the 90 makes the hypotenuse. Same as the last time. Now we label from that missing angle all the way across your triangle. That, like before, is the opposite side. And then the side that helps to create that acute angle, that is still your adjacent side. All right, so you still have opposite and adjacent and hypotenuse. And like before, if you reverse where that angle is located, if that missing angle was down in the bottom right corner, then we would have uh, to switch adjacent and opposite. So let's practice our examples here and look at our formulas so that we can see how to use these inverse functions. All right, now last time, the given angle was inside the parentheses. This time, it's not the given angle in the parentheses, it's the given sides that are inside the parentheses. It's the ratio that you can create. Because again, our goal is to find the angle that made that ratio. So sine inverse is what we would use if they give me the opposite side length and they give me the hypotenuse length. Cosine, again, very similar. The ratio this time is inside those parentheses because it is the given sides to you. All right, because again, your angle, the missing angle is out at the end. It's what it's equal to. So that we don't forget that, I'm going to add that as well. And that's where that missing angle will be found. And same thing with cosine, the x is the missing angle. Now our last ratio, which is our tangent, very similar to what we just did inside the parentheses is our missing side uh, our given side sorry outside of the parentheses at the end that is our missing angle
And like before, the ratio you choose to find for your angle depends on what two sides do they give you. They have to give you two sides or else we can't find the angle. So let's see what happens with example seven here. Find the measure of angle A. All right, so angle A is over in the bottom right corner. Now that symbol that's there in that corner, that's just a way to express another variable. It's just a symbol instead of a letter, but we're gonna label what we have in this picture based off that acute angle. Now right away, the side of 13 is across from the 90, which makes it the hypotenuse. So they're giving you hypotenuse so right now that could be sine inverse or cosine inverse. Either of these use hypotenuse. Now they also give me the side that is right up next to that, that angle. So they're giving me adjacent. So if I have adjacent and hypotenuse, that is cosine. So let's fill in what we've got. So cosine inverse again the little negative one for inverse we fill in the ratio adjacent which is 12 over hypotenuse 13 gives us the measure of angle a let's put this straight in our calculators and see what we get Ooh, oh, sorry about that all right now this time to find your inverse functions you're going to have to hit this F-U-N-C button first, function, right there next, so close to the number seven. When we hit that option, that's when we get the sine inverse, cosine inverse, and tangent inverse, right there in the left side in the middle. We needed cosine inverse. So I'm going to type that in, and we put our fraction in there. We had 12 over 13. So go back to main. All the way to the left, we go to main. So function is getting us the inverses. Then we go back to main to get back to the numbers. So 12 divided by 13. Again, make sure you're in degree mode. And we are. Now, since we're dealing with angles, I'm going to go ahead and round this to the nearest whole number, meaning the nearest whole degree. So that 0.6 at the end causes that 2 to round up. So instead of 22, we're looking at about 23 degrees. And there I go, writing a 2. About 23 degrees is approximately the measure of angle A. And it's done. That's it. That's all we're trying to figure out is what is the measure of those missing angles. Let's try example 8. All right, so example eight, the measure of angle A, same as before, it's got that similar symbol in it. Notice this time though, they give you the four, which is all the way across the triangle, making it the opposite side. They give you the 13, which is the side connected to A, so it is adjacent. They are not giving me the hypotenuse, so I'm not gonna use sine or cosine. Only option we have for opposite and adjacent is tangent. So let's fill this in. Tan inverse, and there's our little negative one of opposite four over adjacent 13 will give us the measure of angle A. So let's see what we get. And we'll put this right into our calculators. All right, back to function. 10 inverse, back to main, 4 divided by, what was it? 13. And there it is. Again, we'll round this to the nearest whole number. So 17.1. The point 0.1 means 17 will stay as it is. So the measure of angle A is approximately 17 degrees. And it's finished. Let's see if we can do some more.
find the measure of A again. I think all of these actually are find the measure of angle A. So it's just a matter of where's the A moving. This time A is the top corner. So they give me the side all the way across. They give me opposite. They give me the side that is connected to A. So that means they're giving me adjacent. So we're looking at tangent again. So tan inverse of opposite 12 over adjacent six will give me the measure of angle A. So let's find out what it is. So we go back into your Desmos, function F-U-N-C for tan inverse, back to main to get our numbers, 12 divided by six, and I get about 63.4 degrees. Again, we're gonna round this to the nearest whole number. So the 0.4 will mean 63 stays. Because remember, Remember, five or higher, we round up. So 63 degrees, let me make sure I saw that right, yes, is approximately the measure of angle A. And it's done. All right, a few more. Example 10, find the measure of angle A. So it's down here in the bottom right corner. All the way across is opposite. They give us the side right next to C. So they're giving us adjacent, which is another tangent, and there's nothing wrong with doing multiple tan inverses. Tan inverse of three over three will give us the measure of angle A. So let's plug this in, see what we get. All right, function to get to the inverse, main to get back to the numbers. Three divided by three, we get 45 degrees. This one has no decimals. It has nothing else past that, so it's exactly 45. So then 45 degrees is exactly, notice I didn't put the squiggles there because I'm not rounding this time. It is exactly 45 for the measure of angle A. And it's done. Just a few more to go. All right, this time angle A is in the bottom right corner. We have the side connected to A, which means we have adjacent. I have the side all the way across, the across from the 90 degrees which means that is the hypotenuse. So let's get this one. Adjacent and hypotenuse is always the cosine. So cosine inverse of adjacent nine over hypotenuse 16 will give us the measure of angle A. Let's plug this in and see what we get. All right, function, cosine inverse, main back to numbers, nine divided by 16 gives us 57.77. So again, that 0.7 means 55 will round up to 56. So 56 degrees will be approximately the measure of angle A. All right, our last one here. So let's see what we get. Angle A is at the top. All the way across is opposite. They've given us the side right across from the 90, which means that's the hypotenuse. So this time, sine is the one we're using. So sine inverse of opposite 10 over hypotenuse 13 gives us the measure of angle A. So let's plug that in and see what we get. All right, function, sine inverse, main for your numbers, 
10 over 13. Make sure, yep. Enter, so 50.2. So again, that 0.2 means 50 will stay as it is. So the measure of angle A is about approximately, again, because we rounded, 52 degrees. Just making sure, 50, sorry, 50. There we go, 50 degrees. And that is our final. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about how you can use your trig ratios uh, to find the missing angles. One last thing to remember here, guys, when you are looking with these triangles, sometimes you have to find both angles inside this triangle. You have one that's 90 and we just found the second angle. So let's say for this one, we add another part to this. Let's say we need to find the measure of angle B as well. So we've already done the measure of angle one and we had to use trig to get to that. Now let's do the measure of angle, the second one, angle two real quick, or measure of angle B. Now remember, all triangles, no matter what classification they have, make 180 degrees. So this right triangle, there's our answer for the first one. Let's do the second. Again, every triangle makes 180. So just like we did at the beginning of the year, add up the two angles that we've got. They gave us the 90. We just found the one that was rounded to 50. So that is 140 degrees that's been used up. Remember the second thing we did was then subtract that from 180 to get the leftover of 40 degrees. And that is our measure for angle B. So the measure of angle B is approximately we got the 40 from the 50 and the 50 was rounded, which means 40 is a rounded number as well. And then there is my second angle. If you wanna use trig to go through the same steps to find that second angle, you can. The only thing with this one, if we do angle B, 10 is no longer the opposite, it would be the adjacent. So for a second, cosine B, I'm sorry, for angle B, we would need to use cosine. So let's see what happens if we did cosine of 10 over 13. So cosine inverse, 10 divided by 13. Sure enough, 39.7, which is why it is rounded up to that 40. So whichever way you go about it, with trig to get that second angle if you need it for problems or use uh, use trig to find it or add up the two angles minus it from 180 whichever way you choose you get the same answer so guys i hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about how you can use your inverse trig ratios to find those missing angles please don't hesitate to reach out to me if you have any questions